Welcome to another week of Arkansas Football Recruiting Report with Otis Kirk. I'm Will Moclair. Otis, tough game yesterday at home against LSU. Uh, we knew it was going to be a tough one. But to lose the way that we did with the defense playing the way they did, it's a tough one to swallow. What'd you say? Yeah, I thought it was a great, I thought it was a great defensive effort, though, Will. I mean, there's been times this year where the, you felt like uh, the Arkansas would have to outscore the opponent to win a game. And yesterday, you know, and you know what? I say yesterday, but you know what? The last three or four weeks, I've seen a gradual improvement on that defense the last three or four weeks. I really have. Now, not to the degree that we saw yesterday. I, was, I mean, that was a big jump yesterday. That wasn't, that wasn't a degree of improvement. That was a big jump. But if they can play like that, or, or continue their improvement on defense and get KJ back. You know, Arkansas has a chance here in these final two games. And uh, they've got to win one of them to get to a bowl game. Uh, we'll see. I mean, the la you really want to do it Saturday against Ole Miss Saturday night over there. You think so? Uh, because, huh? You think so? I think you need to do it because if you go to Missouri, I mean, Missouri's four and six right now. They're looking. They got New Mexico State coming in this weekend. They're going to win that game unless they just completely tank it. They're going to win that. So they're going to be five and six. You really want to be Arkansas and be five and six, playing at Missouri five and six with the winner going to a bowl game. I mean, you want to kind of have that secure before you get there. You know, I just, I don't know. I, I, I that's a little bit of a shaky situation to me. If you if you're trying to get both, I'm not saying you can't go up there and beat Missouri and get both else. Well, I'm just saying if you could pull it off against Ole Miss, which will be tough. Ole Miss is a lot mm -hmm. better team than Missouri, but but uh, you know, I mean, Arkansas. Like I said, if KJ's healthy and the defense continues to improve, I think they can. Be, I I think they can win out. I mean, I, they could lose out too. I'm not sitting here trying to sugarcoat it and say they're going to win out. I'm just saying they could. If the defense plays well and KJ gets back, I mean, but but you know even that happening, they could lose out. I mean, it's just it's SEC, man. I mean, you got two big time, you got Missouri and and Ole Miss. You got two big time games coming up. You get, if you're going to take, you got to take care of business, you know. And it, it, if you can take care of business Saturday, you know, and, and you know, people talk about well, I've given up on the team. I'm ready for basketball. Well, look at it this way: if you if you you're seeing Miss, a lot of that. Yeah, yeah, you see, you see, and hear a lot of that. Okay, if you beat Ole Miss, you're six and five. If you go and win Missouri, you're seven and five. Then you've got a two game winning streak going into recruiting. You're going to a bowl game. You go win the bowl game. You you end the season on a three game winning streak. It just changes the whole outlook of the off season, Will. And so, I mean, no, it's not a loss. It's not a loss season. Are they? Are they where they probably should be? Honestly. I think Arkansas should be seven and three right now, but they're not. So I mean, what I think they should be and what they are are two different things, you know. I mean, I was I thought they'd beat A and M and I thought they'd beat uh, Liberty, but yeah. uh, but they didn't, you know. And and I yeah, even even if they beat A and M, you know, rolling into Mississippi State, that there would have been some real confidence there. Yeah. It's just tough to win right now when you don't have KJ Jefferson on the field. I'm just telling you, people can, you know, and I'm not throwing hate at anyone, but I'm just saying KJ is the MVP of that team, especially on offense. And when he's not, it's one team, it's one team when he's in there, it's another team when he's not in there. It, it's just tough. It, it really is. And it's just, that's just the way it is. Yeah. And, uh, you know, well, right now, I don't, I mean, I just think it's KJ or, or it's a bleak outlook if he's not playing. It just is. I mean, I've watched them, you know, and I, that's just my opinion on on that. I think KJ is big time quarterback. Yeah, hopefully he's better and ready to roll by oh, next so, week. Yeah, but yeah. even though it wasn't the offensive performance we wanted yesterday, still not a bad all around performance for the recruits that were at the game, and yeah. there were a couple. Uh, what'd you see there? Yeah, you know, you have the kids from Allen, Texas, the 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 Michael. A Hawkins kid, the quarterback from 2024, they've offered Devon Mitchell, the, his tight end, uh, big time tight end 2025. Uh, they had a, a Hawkins' little brother who Arkansas offered as a defensive back. He was there. And then, of course, you know, your defensive end there, uh, you know, 
big name. I'm not even going to try to pronounce it. But he's a four-star defensive end in 2024 from Allen. Uh, you know, you have a uh, Dotson kid from Duncanville, from Davion Dotson, who uh, I met at the at a prospect day back in March, I believe it was. Came up if it wasn't, it was in January, but I think it was March. He came up for a prospect day. Very good kid from Duncanville, same school. It turned out Jordan Crook, Max Anderson from Frisco, uh, Texas Reedy High School is a four star. All of these kids are four stars. I mean, they it was four star galore over there yesterday. I mean, that was a who's who of recruiting that they had on campus. And our boy Charlie Collins, who was on the show with us, with uh, uh, you know, Courtney and I a few weeks ago, uh, right after I got out of the hospital, uh, he'll be up. Well, we're going to talk about Charlie, so I'll leave that alone. We're going to talk about Charlie in a few minutes because we're going to leave, go into our next segment because he's in the playoffs. But uh, he was here. Uh, you know, you just, you know, Landon Jackson's little brother, Lance, who's a uh, sophomore, was here. It's just, it was a very impressive list of prospects. You know, you look at quarterback, we talked about quarterback situation. <laughs> in addition to Hawkins, you got Josh Flowers a four-star 2024 from Mobile Baker. He's an important recruit. So it's just, you've got to get, some, you've got to get the quarterback room built up. You know, there's too much right now. It's just all on KJ and, and, and we, you know, they've got to do a better, uh, and it's tough with the portal. It's tough. You get kids, you certainly transfer. So it's tough. A lot of schools are fighting with quarterback depth right now, simply because kids that, not playing, going to leave. And then you don't usually play more than one quarterback. So that's just the way it is. And so we'll we'll see how it turns out. It's going to be an interesting situation. They're going to be watching if KJ comes back for his 2023 season or does he go to the NFL? That's an interesting thing to look at, you know. And uh, I think he could be well served by coming back. But, but that I mean, that's always the kid's decision. He's put in the hard work. He's put in the long hours. It's not for me to decide or to even, you know, I mean, whatever KJ decides, I'm sure Arkansas will support him and they'd love to have him back. I'm sure. But if he goes pro, you got to support the kid and, and, and his decision because it's his to make and he's earned that right. Yeah. He and everybody else. I mean, Drew Sanders, all those kids, Ricky Stromberg, they've all earned the right to make a decision what, um, based on what they feel is best for them. Yeah. I'm in that boat too, that KJ could definitely be benefited by another year now you alluded to it a second ago there are their first week of playoffs for high school football they were this last week it was a cold one out there were, were you at any <laughs> yeah. of those games and what, no, what do we see in not. terms of hog uh, hog targets i, was I don't blame you basketball game friday night so i wasn't at a high school game but i will be this week and my deal is just trying to decide which one to go to because there were four games in northwest arkansas alone i'm just talking about northwest arkansas to have hog either commitments, targets, recruits. I mean, there's four games up here, and I'll just go over them real quick, uh, Will. You've got Conway at Fayetteville. You know, Aaron Smith was an offensive tackle from Conway, who Arkansas is looking at. He's a good academic kid. Probably be a preferred walk-on maybe, but 6'6", 260, 2023 class, plays offensive tackle for the Wampus Cats. He's coming up to play Fayetteville, who has a kid named Brooks Yurchak. Yeah, it's Hunter's son, and Brooks is – Brooks is a, a really good football player, linebacker. I've seen that kid play since junior high. Uh, uh, I had a grandson that played on the same team in, in junior high with him. And Brooks was a, Brooks was a quarterback. I always tease him about playing quarterback, you know. I mean, but he was actually pretty good. But he's a good, very good linebacker. Arkansas offered him a preferred walk-on spot. He's six one two fifteen. Brooks is uh, just payable, uh, you know. Uh, got some schools looking at Drake Lindsay, the quarterback at Fayetteville. Uh, Conway's got a good quarterback too. Uh, uh, Donovan Omolo, a uh, kid that came up to a junior day back in the spring once again, and I talked to him at that prospect day when he after he left here, and he, you know, he's a, I believe he's a left-handed quarterback. I believe he's left handed I know he's a quarterback, but I believe he's left-handed, and he's good. He's, he's putting up some pretty good numbers down there, and you know, Aaron Smith blocks for him. That's one game. Okay, then you go to North Little Rock at Bentonville. You've got Joey Sue committed to Arkansas, the offensive lineman at Bentonville. A kid that was here yesterday is C.J. Brown, the wide receiver from Bentonville, 2024, 6'1", 180. I really like that kid. I'm proud he's starting to really kind of start showing up on some recruiting radars now because he's a good ball player. And, of course, we, we know from North Little Rock, I saw him play about 
what was that about three weeks ago during the bye week? I saw Quincy Groves yeah. play yeah. defensive lineman, six seven, about two hundred and sixty pounds from North Little Rock. Saw him play against Northside. They beat Northside. Uh North Little Rock's been up and down, but uh they're they've played better late. But that'll be a tough game for them against Bentonville. But uh we'll see how that turns out. But regardless of how it turns out, you've got Arkansas commitment on both sides. You got Joey Sue committed to Arkansas, Quincy Rhodes committed to Arkansas, and then CJ Brown being recruited by Arkansas or, you know, having to offer him. The other game, well, one of the other two games was Mills at Shiloh. And this, I'm going to tell you, Will, this is where I'm leaning to go, and this is going to be a classic. I mean, you've got Mills has got Charlie Collins, who we also had on the show in recent weeks. Um, mm-hmm. back I first, I, I, it was the first week I got out of the hospital. Was what it was. I think it was Sunday after the South Carolina game, if I'm not mistaken. But uh, Charlie came on the show and did it with us, and he is just – he's putting up video numbers. I mean, that kid is. He's got 107 tackles, 41 for loss, 41 tackles for loss. Get that. He's got more tackles for loss than most kids have tackles. Ten sacks. <laughs> you know, I mean – He's just a he's just a big time player. He's got every school in the country after him. A uh, bunch of offered Arkansas, LSU, Ole Miss, several others. I mean, it, we could name schools all day and talk about Charlie Collins. He's a defensive lineman from Mills. I love his quarterback, Achilles Ringo. I mean, he's a kid that really doesn't get the ink that you hear of the other quarterbacks. He's kind of like the kid from uh, kid from Conway. He's twenty twenty four, and you don't hear a lot about him. But I'm telling you. The Ringo kid has put up, he's passed for 3,043 yards, 24 touchdowns, five interceptions, and rushed for 217 yards. And then you throw it to the other side, you've got a kid I love, Eli Wisdom from Shiloh, who's got, you know, unbelievable stats as well, about 2,500 yards passing, a tw- uh, you know, a bunch of touchdowns and uh, not very many interceptions, you know, with 26 touchdowns and eight interceptions. And then Wisdom's got 980 yards rushing. And backing him up is Garrett Odom, son of uh, Barry Odom, who has an offer to Arkansas. And then JT Odom is a linebacker from Shiloh who has a preferred walk-on offer to Arkansas. He's 2023. Garrett is 2025, by the way. And then Bodie Neal's a 2023 receiver from Shiloh who has 71 catches for nearly 1,300 yards and 15 touchdowns. So, I mean, that's going to be a game, and I didn't even name all the players. There's guys like Bray Shaw from Mills. I mean, they've got – this is going to be a classic game. I'm telling you, the winner of this game, Shiloh and Mills, they may or may not win it, but they've got an excellent chance of winning the whole thing. I really believe that. The winner of this game, this is a shame that they're playing in the second round because this is two of the best teams in, in that classification in Arkansas. And then the last game I talk about is Elkins hosting Ashdown. Uh, me, John James, the photographer, and then Jacob Bunyard, my friend from DeQueen, we went to Ashdown recently and watched a practice with Shamar Easter. Shamar's a four-star tight end. Actually, with 24-7 sports, he's rated the number one recruit in Arkansas's class. Huh. Uh, committed tight end, number one, four-star. <clears throat> Excuse me. And, uh, I'll tell you a kid that a lot of people don't know about, but there's a kid named Darnell Williams, 2025 running back at Ashdown. And and on three recruiting service has him rated a four star as a sophomore. And uh he's he plays for Ashdown. And so if you go to the game sa- Friday night, I'm sorry, not Friday, Saturday, but Friday night, if you go to Elkins, you can see Shamar Easter and Darnell Williams playing the Elks. And uh I know Elkins is I used to live in Elkins for a couple of years. They've got Always well coached. If I'm not, I'm almost, I'm 99% sure Drew Morgan is an assistant coach out there. So I hope I'm not outdated here. I, I know he was. I'm pretty sure he still is. But Drew uh, played at Arkansas. And, uh, you know, that kid, if they have his mentality, they're going to be ready to play because he was always ready to play. I mean, he outplayed people that probably he shouldn't have outplayed, but it was. It's just a Morgan. Grant did the same thing. <laughs> you know, you don't ever count those guys out. But anyway, those are those are some games, four games right here. You don't have to leave Northwest Arkansas. If you want to see prospects, I probably named 10 or 15, uh, Will, that's either being recruited by Arkansas in some degree, some have committed, some have been offered, some haven't been offered, but maybe offered, maybe offered. Of course, some of them have 
uh, Urichek and Odom have been offered preferred walk-ons. I mean, and there's, like I said, there's some other kids that's playing that could get preferred walk-on offers from Arkansas in this game. So, I mean, this is a, this is a chance to go out Friday night. There's no Razorback basketball game Friday night. So this is a chance to go out and see some good high school football and you can take your choice of games. There's, there's other good games in our Northwest Arkansas, but if you're doing it strictly, strictly from a recruiting standpoint, and you want to see prospects. Those are the four games to look at. And like I said, now I'm not saying don't go to the other games. There's other good games and, and there's other good, very good high school players and teams. But, but if you just want to see recruiting, those are the ones to go see. Yeah. And uh, it's nice to hear all those hometown names. Uh, Couple yeah. good games there. Which one do you think you're going to? I would probably trying to hit a couple. I'm leaning, I'm leaning to Mills and Shiloh, but I I'm leaning to Mills and Shiloh. But I'm gonna be honest with you that Ben that Elkins game, game sounds sounds like a good one too. Well, that is, and that's very tempting because I I want to I've I've seen Easter. I mean I've seen I saw Williams practice, but I wouldn't mind seeing them play. Yeah, I yeah I I wish I could. Uh, for once in my life, I wish I could multiply myself times four and be in all four games, you know, and then have four different stories, you know. So yeah. that would be awesome. But uh, in a perfect world, yeah, in a perfect world, I don't know if me being four, time four would be perfect. A lot of people might tell you that'd be awful. <laughs> but anyway, uh, but I probably lean to Mills and uh, Shiloh because I just think there's so much. Like I said, the winner of that game. They very easily could be playing in War Memorial Stadium later in the later in the playoffs for the state championship, and uh, and I know some schools on the other side of the bracket and even on their side of the bracket, like Valley View, will have something to say about that. But Cam uh, Valley View's got Brian Huff, who's linebacker, has been offered by Arkansas. They're hosting Camden Fairview, and if Valley View wins, they will host the winner of this Shiloh. Uh, Mills game the following week at Valley View, which is up by Jonesboro. I've actually, when I was at the Mina Star, I covered a volleyball tournament in Valley View, Arkansas. So I know where Valley View is. I've been there. Yeah, I couldn't point to that one. It'll be interesting to see uh, where I end up. Going to have to talk to Alyssa I, about getting a good one there. Yeah, so Alyssa can give you a good. She can give you some a good choice. Any of those, any of those four will not be a bad option. I mean, any of those four. I mean, uh, North Little Rock. I, I just saw I saw Brooks play earlier against Greenwood, and I saw Quincy against Northside. So that's the one game that I probably would not go to me because I've seen uh, I, Brooks was in preseason against Greenwood, and then Quincy, uh, like I said during the bye week, what was it three weeks, two weeks ago, three weeks ago? So I probably lean and not to go to that one. But any, any but it, even that game is just. I think I think John told me yesterday he and Dudley may be at that Fayetteville game, so it'll be. And I know you guys will be out, uh, you and Mike and everybody else. Oh yeah, so, hopefully the weather's yeah, better so this we'll weekend. We have all these games covered. I'm just deciding where I'm going to go, but but it'll be nice. It's going to be fun. And uh, oh my God, it's going to be 35 degrees again. Low 23. Oh, it's going to be cold. It's yep. going to be cold. It, it's yeah, it's it's not going to be warm. It, yeah, I think that's over with as far as uh, yeah. <laughs> I think being warm and comfortable and wearing shorts and being happy is probably over with as far as covering high school football. Yeah, no, I was at Rogers this last week. It seems like the kids are playing into it. Let's transition into talking about those offered by the Hogs. You want to talk about Kendall Dolby? I hope I'm saying that right. Yeah. What are you hearing yeah, on that he, front? Man, Arkansas made the top 10 for him. They just offered this week. He's 5'11, 180, a cornerback, cornerback out of Northeast Oklahoma A&M Junior College. That's in Miami, Oklahoma. Uh, not very far from here, probably 100 miles or less. I've been there a million times. I don't know what I've ever – well, I know I've measured mileage because I've certainly didn't got reimbursed for it, but I, but it, it's around 100. It, it's a nice little drive over to Miami, Oklahoma. And uh, he is a midterm kid. Like I say, he's 5'11", 180, a cornerback, and uh, All-America. He's got 10 schools on his list. Of course, Arkansas, Oklahoma, and Oklahoma State are three of them being right there. He's from Springfield, Ohio, so he's not from he's not from Oklahoma. So it's not mm -hmm. like he's a uh, grew up a Sooner fan or, or Oklahoma State fan or Arkansas fan either, for that matter. So he's from Springfield, Ohio. Washington State got a visit from him earlier this season during the season, and uh, so you know they obviously you know Washington's in the mix. Uh, 
Uh, there's ten school. He's got that. He's got it down to ten school. This is a kid that had forty seven tackles. Uh, twenty seven of them were solos. Two intercept. Or uh, yeah, two. Excuse me. Two interceptions. Uh, uh, seven pass breakups. Just an outstanding cover corner. And I know you've got Dwight McLaughlin. You've got Quincy McAdoo. You've got Malik Chavis. You've got Jalen Braxton and others coming in in this class, but you can never get too many cover corners. And and this kid is a true cover corner. Like I said, he's an All America. And I'm not, I'm not as big on JUCO recruiting as I used to be since the portals there. But if you could cherry pick and get one, two, or three of the right kids, you're still doing well going to JUCO. And he's midterm. That's another thing that's positive. He's midterm. If you're Sam, if you're Barry, if you're, uh, you know. Uh, uh, Coach Bowman, you've got him at midterm if you get him here. So I mean, you got him in the spring. I mean, you see what you've got then, and you know you you think you're really getting a good player, and they are if they get him. Now, whoever gets him is getting a very good player. So it's going to be interesting to see his recruiting. But yeah, they offered him this week, and they made the top ten. And he's midterm, so it's going to be fun to see follow his recruiting. It's not going to be a long drawn out one because I mean midterm is. I can't believe we're talking about week 11 of the, I mean, it is the crazy. 11th game of the football. So it seemed like the other day I was just getting out of the hospital after the Cincinnati game. I mean, it just seemed like the other day, man. And I mean, we're already talking one home game. And so, uh, yeah, it's just, it's, it's been an up and down season for the Razorbacks as it has for several teams. But, uh, you know, Hey, like I said earlier, man, I talked about it earlier. It's just, you, you've got, you still got a chance to make some things happen. And that's the way you've got to look at it. The biggest thing, most positive thing that happened for Arkansas right now is to get KJ Jefferson back and the defense continue. But I'm going to tell you, I know I'm getting off this, but I mean, I saw, I've seen improvement the last three or four weeks from that defense. Well, it was, Oh yeah. Yes. Yesterday. I mean, they have gradually, they took a big step, huge step yesterday. But it's some huge stops. The last three or four weeks. Yeah. Yeah, they took some huge steps. They've been taking baby steps to get better and better, you know, smaller steps. But yesterday was huge. And that was, I'm going to tell you, Jaden Daniels is a big-time quarterback. I mean, that kid, and they made him look bad. And that's probably the cold weather. Maybe yeah. Cold weather. It, I'm sure that didn't help any. But, but I mean, Jaden Daniels was a very good quarterback. And yeah. He played, he played in the Pac-10 uh, – Pac-12 out there, Pac-10 out there with Arizona State before he came to Arkansas. So I mean, you know, but, but it was a good performance, and and you know, if it's weather, it's weather. But whatever, the defense has made improvement each week, and I saw more of that yesterday. Yeah, you know, you see, you say how's how's the weather going to affect the game? DJ Williams is telling us before the game, oh, this is this is the weather the, the weather we want. It was cold, especially when it's going from 80 degrees on what was it Tuesday to yeah. 20 degrees on Saturday. Yeah. It's just a crazy turnaround for these kids. And walking by the bench between the quarters, I was a guy on the camera on either sideline. You could hear the guys on either bench being like, man, it is cold yeah. out here. No, so it, it was it was yeah. playing a factor, whether people want to say I, it or not. I, I, yeah, I think it played into both offenses struggling some, but I think it affected LSU more. And I, I was the one to ask Sam, uh, Wednesday, yeah, when it was Wednesday, not Monday. My, Wednesday, I asked Sam if he, if, you know, because I was here in 2014 when they beat LSU. It was Brett Bielema's first win at Arkansas. I mean, first SEC win, I'm sorry. And Sam was the offensive line coach. And I asked him, Wednesday, do you, do you think the weather could be a factor? Because it was brutal that night. They beat LSU 17 to nothing. LSU were number 20 in the country then. They're number seven now. So there was a difference. But but and he he said we're gonna we're gonna embrace the wet winter. I mean the weather. We're gonna embrace the cold. We're gonna embrace the embrace the 11 a.m. kickoff. And and I think they tried to. So yeah, and I can see where DJ's coming from because Arkansas Arkansas beat some teams when it was cold and they were from down south. So I mean I think I think it helped Arkansas yesterday. But I'm not gonna give all the credit to that. I I do think there's been some improvement from the defense. And I've been critical of them at times on defense. I think it's only fair to say I've, I've seen improvement three or four weeks in a row. And we, I get part of it. Part of their issue has been injuries. I completely get that. I'm not, but I'm just saying they played some games where the, I felt like the offense, only way Arkansas could win was KJ and the offense rocket. And those guys just simply outscore the opponent. I don't know if they keep playing like they have lately, that that will be the case. I think Arkansas can win the game, but 
the biggest thing yesterday too is they didn't dig themselves a 17 to nothing, 28 to nothing, 21 to nothing hole, Will. And that's what they did in the three home games prior to that. Now, yeah, they got down 13 to three, but it didn't feel like they were digging themselves a hole with that. I just felt like with the backup quarterbacks and everything, they were struggling. But uh, they they fought to the end. I thought they got a terrible spot on the third down. They gave LSU a first down there on that one spot. I thought that was brutal. Well, I mean, it looked like to me they were about a half yard short. I'm not saying LSU wouldn't have gotten the first down, but I just felt like it was a brutal. I don't know if they would have gone for it on fourth down that deep in their territory, but I felt like that was a brutal spot. I mean, it was I, tough. I, I'm not blaming the refs. I'm just saying I thought they missed that one. You know, they missed the call, the first one on Cade Fortin. They called that a, a fumble, and, and they went back and corrected it. to. So they make mistakes. They make yeah. mistakes. And they made one when they ruled that first uh, deal a fumble about Cade, and they corrected that. But I felt like that spot was wrong. It's just, you know, but hey, it is what it is, man. I mean, but Arkansas played their rears off yesterday. You just wish they'd have had that effort against Liberty. So if they had, it probably wouldn't have been a 21 19 loss. Yeah, no, especially if they lose these next two games. I think it'll be a question that Hog fans are asking themselves for a while. If KJ had played against LSU, would we be going to a bowl game? It'll probably be yeah. a topic of discussion for a while. Yeah, but Otis, we really appreciate your time. We've got to ramp things up. Next yeah. week, don't forget, Arkansas football recruiting report every single week. So much more after this. Thank you, Will. Appreciate Anytime, it. Otis. Thank you.